Welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Every Wednesday, Mark and Kim, along with their special guests, will explore thought-provoking topics and ideas that promote creativity, self-help, healing, happiness, and well-being to inspire you on your spiritual journey. Each week, Mark and Kim will discuss different paths to achieving a more spiritual, balanced, happy, and healthy lifestyle. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. Mark and Kim are tested, certified, and professional spiritual mediums, metaphysical teachers, healers, and spiritual advisors with their own individual spiritual practices in Seattle, Washington, and Los Angeles, California. You are the inspired and the inspiration. Good afternoon and welcome to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim. Thank you all for our, to our inspired listeners for being with us today. Wherever you may be around the world, we have got a great show ahead of us. I have to say, I am really excited about our guests. And the topic today, the topic of soul contracts, is a fascinating topic. Um, there's so much that goes into it. And we've got an expert in this area that's going to share her wisdom with us on soul contracts. What are they? How do they affect us? How can we work with them? When we understand these things at a deeper level, boy, can we navigate our way through life with much greater ease. And that's always what it is we want, right? Not only that, though, but... Um, She's a, a wonderful animal communicator, too, and I'm just so excited about that aspect of what we'll talk about today as well. But first, I'm Kim Thalkin, live from the beautiful state of Virginia and soon to be live from the beautiful state of California. I can't believe this move is happening. <laughs> but if you'd like to connect with me, you can do so at lovefirst.info. If there's any way I can support you in the way of readings, healings, or hypnosis, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, you can connect with me on social media. For those of you who follow me on Aloha Freedom Fridays, um, I have definitely put that on hold until I'm settled into the new place. So um, I will let you know when when I'm able to resume that on Fridays. I look forward to it. But without further ado, I'd love to bring my co-host on, Mark Lanehart, the intuitive prospector. Mark, how's it Hi. going? Hi, Kim. Hi, Inspired listeners. It's going good. It's, uh, it's a nice summer day here in Seattle, Washington, and just enjoying uh, the nice weather. And, you know, what I love about today's show is I've been following this young lady for some time now, uh, whether it's on her Facebook Live or I've seen her interact uh, through a, a couple different um, networks. And so I'm excited to have her on today's show uh, because I've been following her for a bit. So it's going to be a fun show. And I'm Looking forward to all of the uh, learning and education and the whole reason we do radio, right, Kim? It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. learning, it's growth, it's transformation. Absolutely. So um, I'm just thinking, you know, uh, for the next hour, because it's going to go by so quick. So let me just get through. If you want to work with me, uh, this is Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector. You can find more information at marklanehart.com. Love to do a little spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual gold. You can catch me every Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time for Metaphysical Mocha Mondays. It's my way of connecting uh, to people all around the world and giving back. And you can also catch us every Wednesday here on Ohm Times Radio, 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. And again, Kim will pick up her Aloha Freedom Fridays. We try to cover you all week, guys, uh, in inspiration. So Kim will be picking that back up when she moves back to California, which I'm excited to have you back in the same time zone as me my friend and um, it's, <laughs> we're going to be back on the west coast uh, if you want to interact with the show we're, we will be taking callers in the second half of the show the number to call in is 202-570-7057 we will be limiting callers to today's topic only uh, and if you want to interact with us on social media Best place to do that is Inspired Living Radio on Facebook. It is our closed community page of over well over a thousand inspired listeners all around the world now. You can post your question there. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram under the handle Inspired for Us. That is the number four. And if you miss this live uh, broadcast that we're doing right now, you can always catch us on our encore uh, shows, whether that's through Ohm Times Radio Archives, 
Podbean, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube, lovefirst.info, or markleanheart.com. Great way to catch four seasons of Inspire Living Radio with amazing guests, amazing topics. And today is going to be no different, guys, as we get into this show uh, with our special guest today. So I'm going to turn that back over to you because I know you have the positive affirmation for the month of June, Kim. And uh, we'll get into welcoming uh, Danielle onto the show. Yes, so the inspired affirmation for the month of June is one of my favorite quotes from Lisa Transcendence Brown, and it is, I close my eyes to see. That means we go inward for all the answers, and I have a feeling we'll probably talk a little bit about that uh, as it relates to soul contract. So today we have the amazing Danielle McKinnon. She is named one of the country's best psychic mediums and one of the top 100 American astrologers and psychics. And uh, she is a well-known soul-level animal communicator, intuitive, soul-level coach, and author. She's a former MBA on the corporate fast track. I know that that one. <laughs> <Danielle> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> now focuses on assisting those seeking a happier, healthier, more fulfilling life through their animals. Oh, our animals do such beautiful things for us. Her work has been highlighted on TV and radio and national magazines, and she has facilitated popular seminars in animal communication, soul contracts, and the intuitive senses, uh, senses throughout the country. She does have a school, and it is the Danielle McKinnon School, is the only school of its kind focusing on teaching animal lovers around the world her unique soul-level animal communication technique. Danielle, thank, thank you so much for being with us today. Welcome, thank Danielle. Thank you for having me. Hi, guys. Yay. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Woohoo! I say that all the time, too. Woohoo! Let's go. <laughs> Yeah, so you're doing such beautiful work out there, Danielle. Thank you for being with us and all the work that you're doing, not only for us humans, but also for the animals. So you started off on a very different path, and and there was something that led you to do what you're doing now. You want to share a little bit about that process? Sure, Um, meaning the process of how did I get here? (laughs) Yes, yes. You were on the corporate fast track. That's very different. MBA corporate fast track. Yeah. Well, I remember I was in, um, I was working in San Francisco. My husband and I used to live on the West Coast. And I just wasn't loving what I was doing. And a friend said, well, why don't you, I think you want an MBA because you want to be the boss, actually, is what she said. And I, I hadn't heard of an MBA, so I looked into it. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. I want to be the boss. But turns out I wanted to be the boss of something different. So, yeah, I did go down that that MBA path. But it wasn't feeding my soul to be studying, doing case studies of Walmart and all of that. That, that wasn't really working for me. Right. My, uh, right. I really – I was the one who was kind of falling asleep a lot in class or text messaging. I mean, it was barely text messaging at that time. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was really invented yet. So I um, had a dog who got very, very sick, and she was a puppy, and we didn't know what was wrong, and we we took her to the vet, and the vet didn't know what was wrong. And see, this is the cool thing, because she knew what she was doing by getting sick. I saw a friend in the parking lot of my gym, and I said, I don't know what to do. She's not getting better. We're spending all this money. Nothing's helping. And she said, why don't you go see the pet psychic? There's a pet psychic Mm -hmm. in town. And um, that was the turning moment for me. I'm a very Mm -hmm. kind of driven person. So, of course, I had an appointment with the guy the next day, and he met my husband and I in the parking lot, and I had my dog. I pulled her out of the vet because she'd been there for several nights. And... He actually was able to connect with her and tell me that she was sick because she'd eaten corn cobs, because Mm. she was anxious since my husband and I had been fighting about my mother. And we'd been fighting about my mother-in-law, but it didn't matter. That was good enough for me. I I was like, this is it. This is my thing. What am I doing in the corporate world? This makes my heart sing and... I realized I'd been doing it already my whole life. I just was discounting it because so much of the world tells you it's not real. They're, they tell you you're, what's that mm-hmm. word? Anthropomorphized. What's the word? 
You know the word I mean, anthropomorphizing? <laughs> yes. What's the word? Yeah. Right. Right. You yep. know what I mean, right? <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> I was told I was too sensitive. I'm putting human emotions in animals. I don't really know what's going on with them. They don't feel that way. But when I met with this animal psychic, for me, that, that changed my entire course of my life because it validated all of the feelings and all of the differences and and everything that I'd experienced up until that point, it showed me that that was real and I didn't need to discount it any longer. Mm -hmm. Mm, Powerful. Yeah. And then I, I did not, of course, probably like many people leave the corporate world right away. (laughs) I developed Mm -hmm. my practice and freaked out for a long time about leaving the corporate world because that was some really great money (laughs) there. Mm -hmm. As an MBA, you earn a lot of money. Um, And I kept putting it off. I kept hearing from my guides. I kept getting messages. It's time. It's time. But my fear prevented me from really listening. So eventually when we um, moved houses, we moved from one house to the next, the day we signed the papers and we're moving into that new house, I was laid off from my job, and so I mm-hmm. took it as, yeah. I was like, all right, the universe took control. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, Great I timing. Was like, yeah, that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and now I try to help people not do that, <laughs> not ignore <laughs> the messages because it's really sucky. And so then I was like, all right, I'm going to I'm gonna do this work. And um, I, I started with animal work full-time, um, but what I thought working with the animals and, and, and doing psychic work at all was was you get information and you fix everything, right? You intuitively get this information and then you present the answer and everything gets fixed and it's all better. And I, I really um, was schooled by my guides and by the animals in – it doesn't work like that. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't work like that. All of these challenges that are coming up in our lives are, you know, they're hooked into our belief systems. They're hooked into lessons that we need to learn in order to evolve our soul. And so I I really um I didn't study it anywhere. I really learned it through the uh, intuitive work that I was doing. That's how I learned all this stuff about soul contracts. That's how I learned all this stuff about animals and their soul contracts with us and how they're teaching us. Um, But I can't say that was an easy path. I just made it sound like really smooth and easy. It wasn't. (laughs) There's a lot that went into that, I know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's not like, oh, yay, it's all set. No, no. I am really great at resisting everything good for me and being like, no, 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 I know more. I'm scared. I'm so good at that. So uh, I tend to have the, um, the hardest path. I tend yes, to take that uh-huh. path and then – but it's good because then anybody I'm helping and working with in any way, I've been there but worse. So um, yes. I can help them not go down that road. Did that answer your question? That, yes, that <laughs> is. You know, I mean, it has everything to do with what it is we're talking about today because your your aunt, your, your pet, your aunt, your dog at that time helped put you on this on this path that was a contract. So let's talk about what what are soul contracts because I think people hear them but they they may not understand what a con the soul contract is. And okay. I know you have a, a very good book called Soul Contracts, Find Harmony and Unless Unlock Your Brilliance. Um if people are interested in, in learning the you know the depths of this topic. But um yeah, share with us what are soul contracts. So Typically, people think of soul contracts as a contract like that you and I, Kim, we have a soul contract with one another. They they think of it that way, or they think of it as um, an agreement that somebody made that says uh, that prevents them from doing something, and they can go and they can uh, break it. They can break the vow. They can and 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 that. Um, I think that's how most people think of the soul contracts. But in my work, I really – I found that they were different from that. And this Mm -hmm. is what I found. um, We – when we incarnate, 
as people into our human bodies. We incarnate with these souls, and our souls are, we're looking to evolve our souls. And the way to evolve our souls is by learning the lessons that our souls need to learn. What I found through the animals is that we humans are working on learning unconditional love. We have not mastered unconditional love. <laughs> None of us have mm-hmm. yet. Animals have mastered unconditional love. Mind you, they're the ones telling me this, but that's cool. <laughs> so mm-hmm. we we have not mastered unconditional love. And the way that shows up in our lives is in these soul lessons that help us to master unconditional love. So we'll come in needing to learn either that we're safe, supported, and protected, that we're deserving and loving, that we are, I mean, that we're deserving and worthy, that we are lovable, or that we are good enough. Those Mm -hmm. seem to be the four main ways that we um, evolve our soul by learning those lessons. So what will happen is somebody will incarnate, And their soul will be like, all right, in this lifetime, I'm going to work on believing that I'm good enough, believing in myself. And so all of the things that go on in their life are geared toward helping them learn that lesson. The challenge is that when we start going through life with a belief that we're not good enough, Right, so if I and I, that is one of the ones that I am still working on, which is believing that I'm that I'm just good enough. Um, mm-hmm. So what happens is I start having experiences in my life that that kind of exacerbate that belief that I'm not good enough because I'm still working on learning it. So as a result of me not believing I'm good enough, I will create what. I call a soul contract. So this is different. I will create what I call a soul contract, which is really an agreement at the soul level with myself that says, well, I want to avoid not feeling good enough. How do I avoid that? Well, you know what? I'm going to be number one at whatever I do. And that becomes my soul contract, uh, Mm -hmm. one of them. Or I say, you know, I feel like I'm not good enough. I am going to be the best friend to everybody to prove that I am good enough. And then I have a soul contract of loyalty. Now, these things sound great, but what happens when you don't feel okay to leave a friendship because you need to be loyal in order to prove that you are good enough at a deeper level? So these soul contracts, they early on, like um, up until about we're five, this is when we're creating these soul contracts, We are making one after another to avoid experiencing that negative belief within ourselves. Did that make sense? Because I just did a lot of talking. (laughs) Yes, yes, that that makes sense. We love it, though. Um, On that note, we're already going into our first break, so stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes as we continue this fascinating conversation on soul contracts. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Are you seeking answers to life questions? Would you like to connect to a departed loved one? Are you suffering from pain, stress, or anxiety? Kimberly Thalkin is a tested, certified, and professional psychic, spiritual medium, energy healer, hypnotherapist, and the founder of Love First, where life transformations happen. Love First services support, guide, and empower individuals by connecting them to their highest potential to live a healthier, joyful, and meaningful life that's filled with purpose. All services can be done by phone, Skype, or in person in Encino, California. Please visit lovefirst.info. That's L-O-V-E-F-I-R-S-T dot info for more information. Death Row Dogs Rescue is a 100% all-volunteer, no-kill-rescue 501c3 nonprofit organization. 
We are run solely by volunteers who dedicate their time and resources for the past 30 years to rescuing homeless pets from the streets in Los Angeles and surrounding areas and from city and county animal shelters who are on death row often moments away from being euthanized. We provide housing, medical care, and training to these neglected, abused, and often severely injured animals. Donate now, save a life, and allow these beautiful dogs to experience a home life filled with love. All donations are greatly appreciated and are tax deductible. Please visit www.deathrowdogsrescue.com to see some of our amazing dogs who need homes. Do not breed or buy. Make adoption your first option. And welcome back to Inspired Living with Mark and Kim as we continue this fascinating conversation with our guest today, Danielle McKinnon, talking about soul contracts. So, Danielle, before we went to break, you were talking about, um, you know, the different things that we work on in this lifetime. So you were giving the example of, let's say, not feeling worthy enough and bring, having soul contracts, if I understand this correctly, that bring in experiences that help us to avoid that negative thought. Yes. Right? Okay. But then there can be an imbalance with that. Right. Well, we need to experience the negative thought to have the option to learn from it. So what happens is those right. soul contracts, the one that says you have to be number one no matter what, well, at some point that's going to bite you in the bum, right? At some point you're right. going to be like, oh, my God, this is really exhausting. I can't keep doing this. And that feeling is usually what drives people to look deeper and discover the negative belief or the, 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 that negative belief that the lesson they're supposed to learn. But these, these soul contracts are not comfortable. We have soul contracts that say be number one, hide, don't be in the spotlight, only be in the spotlight, uh, give to everybody else, don't take care of yourself, sacrifice for others. Like These are all things that seem like a great idea when we're little because they help us avoid those, uh, those negative beliefs. But they beautifully come back and assist us because they become so uncomfortable in growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you there are different types of soul contracts that you talk about in your book. Do you want to go through what, what some of those are to give the audience a, a, an understanding of where these soul contracts can come into play? So um, some of them are some of the ones that I just, that I was just talking about, like a big one that I see people have is a soul contract, basically where they say they're going to give and help everybody else at their own mm -hmm. expense. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. when you meet somebody who keeps getting into a, rela a bad relationship where their partner is always kind of taking from them and running the show and they don't feel comfortable speaking up. And, and that's actually another huge one, which is um, – not speaking up a lot of people say well i'm not oh, going yeah. to speak up and if i don't speak up it makes everybody else comfortable and then they'll see how good i am and i can feel like a good person a valuable person a worthy or lovable person um, by making them all happy and not having any needs myself it's really interesting the ways that people come up with to supposedly alleviate the challenge, but in the end it only mm -hmm. exacerbates the challenge. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so in your book, I know you talk about things like the pre-birth soul contract, the, the, life, the lifetime soul contract, the bump contract. <laughs> These are all yeah. So are let's talk about that. Uh, different ones. <laughs> I know. I think the easiest one to talk about here would be the bump contract because um, – that it's a bump contract. It's basically a – it's something that's meant to kind of jar you into action. So for me, the bump contract was – it show, the bump showed up when I signed the papers on the new house and at the same time lost my job that, that same day. That was in place to make things so terribly uncomfortable – that I had to start doing things differently. We really, mm -hmm. as people, we don't make change. Like who wakes up, I always say this, but who wakes up in the morning and goes, 
wow, everything is so awesome right now, and I'm so happy. I'm going to make big changes mm-hmm. in my life. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, oh, yeah. we don't really Not do many. That. <laughs> no. So the, the bump contract serves as a – it's kind of like the universe has been giving you um, – one message after another, you're ignoring it and ignoring it until finally the universe goes, yeah, no, <laughs> we we need a big one. And so they create a uh, a bump. Uh, and, it, you know, bump makes it sound minor, but it's really, these are like life and death type uh, situations usually. But the nice mm. thing is that almost everybody listens. <laughs> when it mm. shows up, everybody listens. It's, right, when um, they're backed up against the wall, it's like there's no place else to go but to listen, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, oh, it, it's, it, you know, you're kind of looking for that dark night moment, and that's usually when people make the change. It's out of that dark night moment. That's when people decide they're no longer going to follow the same patterns. They're no, they're going to look at things differently. They're going to investigate. I find that – um you can get like a gray moment, a little bit of a challenging moment, but it's not until somebody feels like they don't really have any choices that they start to make that deep soul level change, that they start to actually address the beliefs that are going on. Often people will, like if we look at the person who has a soul contract of overgiving, um, to give to everybody in order to prove that they're okay, often people will um, realize, hey, this isn't comfortable. I'm, I'm, in, there's imbalance in all my relationships. I'm giving to all my friends, and no one's there for me. And so what they'll try to do is they'll just try to stay in the soul contract and say, well, I'm not going to give so much. I'm going to try and pull back. And they're trying to like prevent themselves from doing something that the negative belief that they haven't yet mastered is telling them they need to do in order to be okay. So it's kind of like putting the cart before the horse. That belief has to be addressed, and that's how you actually um, master the soul contract and release yourself from it. It's not about a prayer or a vow or burning the, you know, writing it out and burning. It's really about learning that soul level lesson because once you learn that soul level lesson, you don't need to do all these soul contracts. They're, it's literally like it voids them because there's no point. So, like, if somebody's having a challenging relationship, let's just say with a parent or a significant other, yeah, then it, it, they um, they can't yet. Yeah, like what you just said, you can't just um, ask for that contract to not be so difficult anymore, to shift the contract in any way. The contract is what it is until you've learned what it is you need to learn. Yes. Isn't that annoying? Mm, That is. (laughs) Oh, goodness gracious. I know. (laughs) I resisted that knowledge for a long time, too. (laughs) Yeah, it's all about the lesson. (laughs) What What about, like, free will, though? How does free will play into our contracts? Well, you keep making the choice. You don't have to, right? You don't have to make the choice to overgive. But there's that part of you because of your belief that says you're not good enough or you're not worthy or whatever it is. Because of that belief, you keep being driven to do it. It doesn't feel okay not to do it. You can, of course, choose not to, but that wouldn't feel okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because the belief keeps telling Mm -hmm. you, no, 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 you're not good enough. You have to do this. And Mm -hmm. it's like this pattern you've developed to compensate for that negative belief by doing this thing. It's like a soothing habit in a way, but way, way, way bigger and deeper. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I see. Okay. Now, do we have um, (laughs) – and Mark, (laughs) feel free to jump in here, but do we have contracts? As I've heard other people say this, sometimes we even have contracts with entities. Yeah, um, it's an interesting thing, and things have kind of evolved beyond what I wrote in my um, book, because I've heard that as well. And in my book, I talk about let's work with only light. And I still mm-hmm. absolutely believe that. But what I have found since, because the book's a few years old, what I have found since then is that it's more that 
we feel like we need to do certain things, maybe that involves negative energy or maybe not, because of the belief. So even in terms of like um, hooking up with a negative energy, being in negative energy, attracting in negativity from others, it's still from what I've learned just in the past few years comes back to a negative belief that we're compensating for. Does that make sense? It comes down to a negative mm-hmm. belief we are compensating for. Oh, okay. Yeah, the negative belief of I'm yes. not good enough or I'm not worthy or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. So we'll choose. Uh, if I believe I'm not good enough and the only way to compensate for that is to work with people who are underhanded and shifty and doing bad things, but that's going to get me the money that I want to feel good enough. You know, something like it kind of, it all comes back to that lesson that the soul is learning. Mm. Like those you said, lessons. the lessons. Oh, those I lessons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lessons. The lessons. You know, I just so Mark, uh, you... I had a light. Yep. Well, yeah, I just had a light bulb oh. moment, and, yeah. and this actually ties all three of us together, which is quite interesting. Uh, as I was just listening to the conversation, first and foremost, Danielle, thank you for stepping into your authentic self and really choosing to, you know, you, you spent a lot of money for your MBA, right? And uh, yeah. going to college and getting into that job that you no longer wanted. And you get to the point where, you know, does this feed my ego or does it feed my soul? Am I doing this for the destination or am I doing it for the journey, right? And I actually read your book. Uh, you said a few years ago, it came out in 2014. And yeah. Kim, we actually all have a connection because the soul contracts, finding harmony and unlocking your balance was actually... Um, uh, recommended and forwarded by um, Bob Olson, bestpsychicmediums.com, ah, yeah. bestpsychicdirectory.com, and afterlifetv.com. And yeah. when I was looking that up, I joined Bob's directory in 2013, and I had seen this recommendation, which then opened that door to lead me to read Soul Contracts. And Kim and myself and you, Danielle, are all part of Bob Olson at some point. Because uh, both oh. Kim and I are both uh, <laughs> active members on the site of the directory where people, you know, contact oh, us neat. for different, you know, spiritual guidance. And I always yeah. remind our listening audience, some people call us for advice. Some other other people call us crazy. So um, I just want to thank you for <laughs> stepping into your authentic self because by doing that, you've opened many doors and pathways and you've shared that um, authentic path of being an animal communicator, being a psychic, being a spiritual coach or consultant. And that shares that that has a ripple effect. Because imagine what your life would be if you wouldn't have taken that leap of faith, right? To yeah. move into, I I'm going to move into a psychic, I'm going to be an animal communicator. And you're like, what? <laughs> um, so I just want to thank you because our tagline for the show is you are the inspired and the inspiration. And I just wanted to share that with our listening audience that, you know, it is worth the leap of faith to step into your authentic self because again are we feeding our ego and what the you know society wants for us or are we feeding our soul and i found you know your book to be um, very entertaining but i was just sitting here i was like oh my gosh we all have a connection through bob olson which is quite interesting because i didn't know i'd be talking to you what five years later on the radio right. show so i just love the synchronicity <laughs> and the cool. synergy of it all yeah very cool yeah i love bob yeah, and, uh, and Kim, I didn't know if you knew that. I don't, I don't know if you knew that connection because Kim's on there as well. Mm-mm, no, I didn't. I didn't. So see, I'm just Funny. making the point that we're all somehow connected. We're all somehow <laughs> now, now, <laughs> doing the same point, work. To that, to that point, Danielle, you talk about everybody that comes into our life as a soul contract with us, right? Yes. Well, no, they have a lesson. Say it this way because the, the, this will make it easier. They have a lesson to teach us. A lesson. So to teach whether us. we call it a soul contract, a contract, uh, I mean, whatever, whatever word you put to it, these these connections, from what I have learned, they are decided beforehand. Isn't okay. that like? It, it, <laughs> they are decided beforehand. So like yeah. you were saying, that person that cuts you off, you know, in your book on the on the freeway, which there's a lot yeah. of that in L.A. That's what I'm going back to. So I'm going to have a lot of connections. <laughs> have fun with that. No <laughs> uh, well, and it's the same thing with animals. Every animal that you um, encounter – just like every person, there is something to learn there. And uh, they're all kind of working. So you have different lessons, different soul lessons that you're working on learning. And you can start to trace back, 
oh, wait a minute, five different people have cut me off on the highway and this makes me feel so angry and like I'm being taken advantage of and I always feel this way and I feel this way because I don't feel good enough. Like you can start to trace it back to mm -hmm. that original soul lesson. It's really there kind of crazy. Go. Yeah. So, so I would, you know, we don't have any callers yet, but I would love to ask you about my little girl, Lexi Lou, who's like my little, she's my partner <laughs> in crime. And um, she's a four and a half pound Chihuahua mix that I rescued. I would love to know what my contract is with her. Okay. So Lexi Lou, so she is a, she's a dog? She's a dog. Okay. <laughs> and she is alive, yes? Yes, she is. <laughs> okay. So let me go to Lexi Lou. Okay. So when I I'm going to I'm going to start out by um just telling you a little bit about how she comes through to me. Did, wait, you guys okay. are psychics. Do you talk to animals as well? Well, I'd love to ask you about that because I, you know, and I love animals, but I don't know if it's just that I don't take the time to 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 do that more or to strengthen that that ability, but I don't offer that as a as a service. No. Yeah, the more but I say it, it, then I'm. What's that? Have you done it? Yeah, I've I've done it before. I've had people. I haven't, you know, like friends to say what what am I, you know, what's my horse yeah. thinking or whatever. Yep, yep, yep. But like, I don't do it consistent enough, and okay. so, yeah. The reason yeah, I was I asking, that... I was wondering. Oh yeah, Mark. Well, I was just going to say, the more I say I'm not an animal communicator, the more it shows up. You just talked about the lesson repeating until it, you know, <laughs> repeats until it completes. Uh, right. I just literally did a dem up in Canada this last weekend, and I literally had a dog in the spirit world come through with messages that were just very healing for that person. And the more I say I'm not an animal communicator, and I love my animals, and I talk to my animals, the more they're communicating, but more on the spiritual side, more of those that have actually moved into the etheric world and no longer here in the physical world, I'm having more connections in that in that capacity. Oh, that's cool. So I talk to um, either alive or on the other side, um, which is why I had wanted to know about Lexi Lou if she was alive or not. And then I was asking yeah. you guys that question because I wondered if – Oh, well, I'm connecting with Lexi Lou. Are they going to be connecting in too when they can get all the info? Like I was just wondering, is are we doing it all together? <laughs> I'm always oh, happy okay. to give it a go. Let's go prospecting. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so when I connect with Lexi Lou, um, she kind of reminds me a little bit in the way that she walks toward me. Do you guys remember uh, in the how the Grinch stole Christmas? The um, the uh, the little girl Cindy Lou Who, mm -hmm, and she had mm -hmm. these kind of like pigtails, and she's totally pigtails, yeah. sweet and cute with the with the big <laughs> eyes and everything. This is how Lexi Lou comes through with the sweetness and the cuteness, and uh, I I'm gonna call it an innocence, but I'm uh -huh. also gonna call it a feigned innocence because she knows what she's doing. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like there's all that sweetness, but <laughs> this is calculated sweetness. Um, that, yes. <laughs> Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. She's a okay. smart cookie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But but she doesn't flaunt it. Um, she stays to the side of being sweet and cute and kind of manipulating things a little bit to get what she wants, but really stays on the sweet, cute side. You you would never go, oh, this, this, this oh no, I don't trust her or anything like that, because she <laughs> she's using her. Um, she uses her intelligence to appear sweeter and cuter because that gets her what she wants. Make sense? Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Um, and does she have ears that kind of stick out like the ponytails? Because I don't know why the um, she comes through yes. looking. She's okay. got, she kind of does, she's actually. Got big yeah. Ears. yeah. Okay. Okay. And they're pointed okay. in opposite and directions a lot of times. And yeah. the the ears, for whatever reason, are a focus for her. Like it, it's yeah. kind of like when she walks in a room, um, you know, some when it, when someone walks in a room, oh, look at your eye. You know, there, there's a draw for her. It's the it's the ears with the eyes. This kind of combo makes her. I don't want to say beautiful, <laughs> but attractive. She she gains a lot of attention that way. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. 
Uh, we are heading into a break. We'll continue on when we come back in two minutes. The cutting edge of conscious radio, Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Have you wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free at ascendinghearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. One planet, 7.3 billion people, only one you. Life offers us many opportunities and learning experiences. Are you ready to explore and discover this beautiful planet, the life and energy all around us, the spiritual world, and what is unseen, along with your own personal soul adventure? Mark Lanehart. The Intuitive Prospector is the spiritual connection you have been prospecting for. Internationally known as a tested and professional clairvoyant medium and spiritual advisor, Mark's work as a metaphysical teacher, medical instructor, radio show host, inspirational writer, and hiking guide are here to help you on a journey of self-discovery, healing, inspiration, education, and a whole lot of spiritual awesomeness. Dare to dream. Dare to explore. Dare to live. For more information on Mark's spiritual practice in Seattle, Washington, please visit marklanehart.com or internet search The Intuitive Prospector. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Om Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Opiates has taken everything and everyone I've ever loved away from me. Everything. I blew my ankle out and I got prescribed pain pills by my doctor. If making my detox public is going to help somebody, I'm all for it. I just wish I would have had a warning. Opioid dependence can happen after just five days. Know the truth, spread the truth. A message from Truth, the Ad Council, and ONDCP. Hey, Inspired listeners, welcome back. Our very special guest today, Danielle McKinnon, calling in live with Inspired Living Radio. Danielle, thank you so much for just hanging out with us this last hour and sharing your story and your book. And uh, I know that you uh, have a couple events coming up, so we want to make sure to get those out. And where can people find you on this uh, planet of ours? Where are you located? How do they get in contact with you? All that good stuff. Ah, well, the easiest way to get in contact with me is through my website, daniellemckinnon.com. And um, actually, I'll be at Omega, the Omega Institute, in July teaching a weekend workshop in animal communication. So it's kind of a beginner, totally fun weekend that I do each summer. And uh, the next one is, like, what, a month away or so? I don't know, yeah, however yeah. long away that is. So. <laughs> I cannot wait. It's the best weekend. Every summer I look forward to it. Well, and I love that you're teaching at Omega, too, because that's actually where my spiritual journey is one of the first places that start was at Omega Institute up in uh, upstate New York there. So it's really it's a great place. If you've never been to Omega, definitely check it out. Uh, That's going to be July 19th through the 21st of July, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so definitely check it out. I highly recommend Omega. Kim, have you been to Omega? Have you gone out there at all and no, visited? N- no, I haven't, but I do want to um, – I'm definitely, like, very excited about um, animal communication now. <laughs> <laughs> Setting your intentions. You know? well, it, 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 
the, I love the animals, and but my focus has just been working with, with people. But but our animals, I mean, they do so much for us. You know, the wild animals, the mm-hmm. nature, our pets, all of that. And so, to be able to learn some of your techniques, I know you've got some that you know are unique to to you. Would be just a beautiful thing. Do you do online courses, Danielle? I can't remember. Oh yeah, I, my. Yeah. I have a school, and I do um, a lot. Of, I mean, in fact, that's most of what I do is I'm teaching awesome. people yeah, <laughs> through online. I forgot about that. That's pretty funny. Like, that's what I do every day. Just forget to mention that. Uh, and Good. it's a really cool way to teach because so many people who are – um, intuitive or want to be intuitive or want to work with animals psychically, they feel like they're alone and they're the only crazy person out there. So I love being able to connect people through the computer, basically, where they get to see each other mm-hmm. and form their own little community and realize they're not crazy. There's other people out there just like them. <laughs> now, uh. da- Danielle, do we have um, repeated contracts soul contracts with our pets in multiple lifetimes oh such a cool question so um what happens is as we're working to evolve our soul the animals in our life they reincarnate with us per per lifetime and as we work on that lesson the animal helps us work on that lesson so if i don't nail and master in this lifetime believing totally in myself when I reincarnate, the animals will um, reincarnate with me, though, you know, whichever ones are reincarnating with me, and they will continue working the next level of that lesson. And that's the really cool thing. Oh, animals God. evolve the lesson as we begin to master it. Are we helping them with their own evolution, too? Nope. Isn't that <laughs> That's a one-way thing, huh? There you go. <laughs> well, think about it. They have mastered unconditional love. We have yeah, not. What true. more is there, you know, other than yeah. mastering unconditional love, totally, utterly believing in ourselves and in others in that way? Animals have it down. They've told me again and again that they're here to help us get it. They're, they are sacrificing themselves. They are putting themselves in danger. They are um, giving us love, and they are doing all of this to help us get it. Mm. Um, you're so love, right, though, about it? that unconditional love. I mean, I always think of animals as non-judgmental. They never judge right? us. My, I, my cat, I come home to you, O'Malley, he never judges me. He loves me unconditionally. He's very empathic. I know that there's even science about how the heart rate of a cat's purr and our heart rate can actually sync up. So I know that there's even some yeah. science behind, uh, you know, having animals around you, whether it's a service dog or taking a dog into a uh, a, a nursing care facility to, you know, uh, bring uh, healing and um, energy up. So I, I just know from a science standpoint that animals, and I find that people love their animals more than they love their people sometimes. From I know the there are a lot world. of so people it's, it's interesting. that do that. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of people that love animals more than other people, and then that ends up mm-hmm. being part of their lesson. I can trust mm-hmm. an animal. Now I'm going to take that, and I need to learn how to trust a person. Mm, powerful stuff, powerful stuff. I love it. It's you know, it's funny. Um, and I was laughing because you know, before I went down the spiritual path and was not into mediumship or psychic or animal communications or intuitiveness, um, a good friend of mine, uh, Darcy uh, Pariso, is an animal communicator here in the Pacific Northwest. And I sat with her in a group for four uh, for over four years, and uh, she would always talk about the power of the animals and the power of the mm. animals. And it's always been fascinating. So finally, I, I, I had her come in and do a reading. And we had two cats at the time. And from our perspective, and just sharing with the, the listening audience, our perspective as owners was, oh, these guys are brothers, Finnegan and O'Malley. They love each other. They hang out. Darcy came in and said, nope. <laughs> They're roommates with each other. So it kind of reminded me what you just said. Do they do the animals, you know, uh, do they evolve? And you're like, nope, they've already got it down. They're already here. But it was just funny to learn that the cats that, you know, for a few years we thought were actually loving brothers and loved hanging out with each other actually didn't like each other and only tolerated each other as what Darcy would quote as roommates. So uh, just a fascinating, you know, journey and learning all about animal communications and our perspectives and what they're here for and the soul contracts like you're talking about. 
it is always really fun to find out what the animals really have to say versus what we think they have to say. I love that part. <laughs> right. <laughs> A lot of times people are very surprised. By exactly <laughs> well, Kim, now you get to know what Lexi Luce uh, thinking. <laughs> I know, Danielle, and I just want to thank you for that beautiful, you know, giving me some feedback on her. Oh, I forgot. Like, I, I didn't even oh. finish. <laughs> oh, okay, sure. I'd love to hear what her contract is, but I just want to Yeah, thank you. so um, let me go back to – I'm so sorry. I got. I don't know. I would, was not even thinking. We actually went to break. To that's why. <laughs> oh, there we, oh, there we go. <laughs> I'm also very easily distracted. Okay. So let me go back to Lexi Lou. So what Lexi Lou shows me is that she does have you, Kim, wrapped around her, her little finger. And that yeah. you spend a lot of time, <laughs> like, looking at her, wondering about her, and even worrying about her, even though she shows me that she shows you that she's pretty good at taking care of herself. Does that make sense to you? Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, and so I'm a, so fun. <laughs> Why, Mark? Do you know this already? I do. A lot of what you're her. saying, I, I I know a lot about uh, her dog and from her pictures and how she talks about her. So everything you're saying is is spot on. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so then, if we go into what is she? I'm sorry, I have to cough. <clears throat> sorry. If we go into what is she teaching, Kim, hold on, let me go back to Lexi Lou. So there's um, like a need in you, Lexi, uh, sorry, Kim, to kind of like worry, help. It's almost like over help, Lexi Lou, oh, get boy. through everything. Yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. she's helping you learn how to almost like, I'm not I'm not trying to say it mean, but it's almost like mind your own business a little bit and let Lexi Lou be empowered to do her own stuff <laughs> while you take care of yourself. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, I'm obsessed with her. Uh, yeah, I was trying to say it really nice. <laughs> I know. Goodness gracious. Speaking truth. Thank you. Yeah. Thank You're welcome. You. I'm glad oh, I remembered my. to finish that. <laughs> Oh, no, we, we've gone on to other things. It's just been such a beautiful conversation. So I hope that, you know, mm -hmm. by the listeners hearing, you know, you talk about how our animals are helping us, how Lexi Lou's helping me, how your dog helped you, that they feel inspired to understand that connection on a deeper level and perhaps even want to sign up for one of your classes to, to, yes. to learn that for themselves because – I see more and more, especially like in places like LA and stuff where the, you know, dogs are, they are pampered more than people are out there, you know. <laughs> and so oh, it's to, fun. Uh, right? It's fun to talk so to those it, pampered dogs and hear what they have to say about it. It's really fun. <laughs> but, you know, people Might have to have a that. second show on that topic. <laughs> right. But Sorry. people who take that deep of an interest in their animals that just, you know, they love and cherish and adore them that way, that it, wouldn't it be empowering and just nice to know that they could t speak directly to them through, you know, what it is you teach out there. So everybody, sign up. Take a look at those <laughs> classes. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, there is, a, it, um, you can go to DanielleClass.com as well, and there's a uh, class right there that you can sign up for immediately. I forgot about that one because that's the best, awesome. most fun thing, right? Watching someone learn how to connect with animals and go, oh, this is real and I can do it. And then they feel so empowered mm -hmm. now because they can have the deep connection much more easily mm -hmm. than when they can't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the, the, the one time I did an actual reading for a friend on their horse, boy, it was just fascinating this horse was talking to me like if we were sitting down at starbucks over a cup of coffee or something <laughs> you know yeah really sharing like a chatterbox like a girlfriend that doesn't stop talking i was yeah. just amazed by that it is cool the funny thing is a lot of people won't get an animal communication reading because they're worried that their animal is going to give away their secrets Oh, <laughs> well, I'm and glad it happened. We didn't do that over the air. 
<laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> yes, it does happen. But never do animals con- – they don't share information that would be detrimental to somebody or hurtful. Everything they share, even if it's something that someone's like, oh, I don't know if I want to talk about that, the way the animal presents it, it's intended to help the person learn. So even if the person was originally not so into it, they will be because of the way the animal will say it. There's a there's a mindfulness to it, right? They're they're being mindful yeah. of of that lesson. That's very powerful. What do you think of horses? Because I've always heard about horses being so wise and so. Oh. Um, my colleague Darcy's told me a lot of that, and then Kim, you just said that too. What do you think of horses? Every year, I take a group of people to Costa Rica to work with this incredible group of horses, and really, all horses are incredible. Horses are. Um, they take the whole idea of animal lessons and soul contract, they take it and make it so very visible that mm. there, there's no way you can ignore it. Um, I love horses, and I love how they will actually work with a person to help that person rebalance themselves at a soul level, and this is just what they are doing naturally. They just do it usually a lot more visibly than, say, a dog or a cat. But dogs and cats and everybody else are doing it as well. But horses are so big, it really wow, uh, that's, it's really that's powerful. awesome. Great at putting it in layman's terms. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you so much. Thank you for having Thank me, guys. Danielle. This is Hope beautiful. to have you back on. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. I, uh, absolutely. And Everybody sign up for those animal communication classes. <laughs> Until next week, lots of love. Always come from a place of love. Take care, everybody. Namaste. Namaste.